Bible study and the scriptures speak. Those persons who would, who would want to let you believe that the law was from, the Ten Commandments were from, from, from creation. creation. Yeah, no. That's not what the Bible John teaches. 1 verse 17. For the law was given to By Moses. Moses. Amen. But grace and truth came Amen. by Jesus, Jesus Christ. The dispensation of, of the law was given to Moses and the dispensation of grace, which, in, which we are at now, mm -hmm. this, our dispensation came immediately after. Mm -hmm. So we don't mix up the scriptures. That's right. The law was given to Moses. That's right. And I, when I go to heaven, I want to, just, I want, I want to meet Moses. Because I think I like Moses. <laughs> this man, I mean, something boiled in his spirit that day when he saw his Hebrew people under oppression. And even though he went about it wrong, mm. and even though he did some, some, some terrible things, he messed up. But I believe that God's heart for this man was just so loving because God made him a type of Christ. A deliverer. One and a deliverer. Moses was a deliverer of a whole wow. nation. Wow. To whom God used to, to start to, to, to issue the very law of God. Why was the law given? Right, we're going to share this section. I'll start. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added, the law, and the, the scripture that we're using for this part to show you why the law was given is Galatians 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Find it in your Bible. Galatians 3, verse 19. Yes. We are going to be reading about why the law was given. That's right. Wherefore serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. The law was added because of transgression. transgression. In other words, sin. God added the law because of transgression. Mm -hmm. Till the seed should come. All right. The law was until the seed should come. Who is that seed? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus to whom the promise was made. The promise was made to the seed. Jesus Christ, and we are in him. So the promise was made to us in him. And it was ordained by angels. God didn't joke about this thing. It, mm. it, it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. That's right. Right? But Andrew, you want to just break down that scripture? <laughs> okay, Sister Donnick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we, it's very, very clear um, till the seed. You know, this is, this is something that, what is the seed that he's talking about? The seed of the woman was promised to Eve. In all of her mess up and God being angry in the garden, Eve still made a promise. So the promise, the, the covenant of promise was made primarily with Abraham. But we also know that Abraham himself was promised some things personally but also that there was a seed that Abraham would have that was also promised something. So it is awesome. The law was given to show people that they needed to depend on God and trust in him. It was given because of transgressions. We did not understand that we were captive to sin. The human race, the devil had hid his hand inside of the human being, inside of the human body, and was actually controlling the human race from the inside. And this is confirmed by Romans chapter 7 and verse 5. And the whole chapter of Romans 7, we see a Romans 7 man who was a man that was under the law, a man, and that was Saul speaking in the per first person, but also speaking about, he said, when we were in the flesh, he says, we were the motions of sin, which were by the law, was what was being produced. So, so the law came to magnify transgression, to expose the root of the transgressions in men, in people. Why, was men all, why were people always dishonoring God? What was it? So the law came to show the transgressions, to expose the devil, to expose that the devil had planted himself had corrupted the seed of the human race and um, that, that man needed a deliverer. 
that man needed the seed to come for real, that God's promise of the seed, even though it was 2,500 years or so, or 2,000 years promised earlier, that he still was going to be true to his promise. So that's why the law was given. And um, man was not going, God was not going to allow man to rest in his own righteousness. So the, the Roman 7 man, which a lot of people preach in the church as if that is the normative Christian life, that's not the normal Christian life that is being spoken about in Romans chapter 7. That is a man that is in Romans 7 verse 5, a man who was in the flesh, who was a slave to sin. He was, it was a man under the law. So this man in Romans 7 is a man who is still under the law. That's very clear in Romans chapter 7. He's a man who is sold under sin. He's a slave to sin. In slavery, we as the Negro race, we understand what that means. Oh, we were sold literally as slaves. We were on the, 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 the block, the auction block, and they would auction, you know, different slave masters would auction for the slaves. Sold under sin. He was unable to come forth with the righteousness, unable to produce the righteousness of the law. So this man in Romans 7, under the law, so he came to the, the understanding, he said, therefore it's no longer I that sin, but I find a law in my members. So the law of God, or the law of Moses, came to expose the law in the human body that was created by another spirit, by a foreign spirit. The law of sin and death, this is why the law was given, to expose that. And it was effectual in doing that because men realized that, listen, we cannot fulfill the law in the state that we are because we are captive to sin. So the, the, the unsaved, right, um, basically could not and cannot fulfill the law of God because mm -hmm. the law is spiritual. And the man who is not saved is carnal. God knew that man and God knew that Israel would would not be able to keep the law. So he provided a sacrificial system That's right. as a way to keep them to own up to their sins. The, 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 the sacrifices were just to, to, as a way to cause them to, to, to admit to their sins. And once they admitted to their sins, then that sacrifice just covered their sin. It just covered mm. their sin, right, for a year. It could not purge the guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. It could not take away sins all right now but jesus came in his dispensation mm -hmm. as the lamb of god that is not coming to cover up sin all right jesus is not in the cover-up business that's right he came to take away the sins of the world that's just so exciting to come on put your hands together and give god Amen. Back. so god knew that man that israel sorry god knew that israel would not be able to to keep the law and that they would keep falling. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he provided a sacrificial system as a way for them to own up to their sins and to offer up prescribed sacrifices as a symbol of their need for forgiveness and atonement. All right. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away or remit sins. They were just a symbol. They were looking forward to the one whose blood could take away sins. When I was a child, mm -hmm. I remember we used to sing a song, and I couldn't understand it just till now. It mm -hmm. says, not all the blood of bulls on Jewish altar slain could give a guilty conscience peace mm -hmm. or wash away my stain, right. but Christ. Christ came and he's not covering up sins. Mm -hmm. He's taking away sins. And so we want you to realize that the law was good in itself. It was the good perfect. law of Amen. God. It was perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. Psalm says that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So those who were living under the old co covenant, the law converted their soul, but not to the to conversion that we have now in terms of a new creature. All right. right? But um, Paul, as a man who kept the law, he believed in the essence of the law. He came to a point when he realized that, oh, wretched man that I am, who is going to deliver me from the body of death? Body and of death. The body of death. And we are going yeah. to go in that as we go in the new and living way. Yeah. But I want to leave two scriptures with you before we take your questions. Because we try to give you a peep of a New Testament reality each week relative to the covenant. 
Um, one is taken from Hebrews 10, verse 1. It's a scripture I want you to look at. Mm. It's a scripture I want you to rejoice because I don't know why God allowed us to be born in the dispensation of the law, of, the, of grace. Mm. But I'm excited about the dispensation that he has chosen for me to manifest him in. Are you? Amen. Yes. No. The scripture I'm giving you is Hebrews 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. The law had some shadows of good things to come. Mm -hmm. Some of the shadows that we see in the Old Testament, that the Lamb of God, the, the Lamb that was used to sacrifice the sin, that Lamb that was, that, that was sacrificed was a type of the Lamb of God that mm -hmm. would take away the sins of the world. Yeah, we also it, yeah. saw a, lamb, a, a, a shadow in terms of the ark. Mm -hmm. The ark was a shadow that, that God allowed Noah to build. The, it, but but the, in the New Testament, no, we don't have no ark, no mm. board ark. We have a church, which is a type of the ark. We have the temple. There are so many things that, that, that in the Old Covenant, there are a shadow of good things to come. Mm. But the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing. Right. It's a shadow. It's not the very image of the things. Yeah. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered, year by year continually make the commerce perfect yeah, hebrews 10 yeah. verse 1 the law made nothing perfect mm -hmm. the law having a shadow of good th things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices it doesn't matter how blemish or the, the, the animal was free of blemish uh -huh. it doesn't matter how the animal was spotless it covered sin it could not take away sin and it could not make them perfect. Amen. And the second scripture, the second scripture, and you want to take that one? For the law made nothing perfect. That's Hebrews 7 verse 19. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw near unto God. So that's, that's the law there. So there are so many things that distinguishes the law, the dispensation of the law. So many things. Uh, there was the, the, the whole system of, of, of um, worship that, that God gave to Moses. God gave the entire law to one man. That's, that's really phenomenal that God would do that to Moses. We know that after Moses' death, other prophets came along who would amplify the law and keep the people on track with God. But there, were the, there was the tabernacle. God showed, took Moses up into the, into the mountain for 40 days and showed him at the, 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 the tabernacle in heaven, the real temple in heaven, and he said to Moses, I want you to build that tabernacle after the same example of the one you saw in heaven. And God gave him the specifications of that. There was a whole priesthood um, that came out of the law, the Levitical priesthood. God wanted a whole nation of priests, but he did not achieve that under the law. Um, we are going to see that he did that in a new and living way, but he did not achieve that under the law. Only one of the tribes pleased God enough to be the priesthood. And um, so there are so many things that distinguish the law. The Sabbath was also another big um, symbol, another big <coughs> um, sign of the law that, that um, operated in that dispensation. And there is also the... The, it is also, the Sabbath itself is a shadow of good things to come in, in the new covenant. And, and so we bless God for the law and how many things happened under the law. We'll go into further details I'm, next I'm week. I'm glad you said that the Sabbath is a shadow of, of good things to come because that was also one of the laws that was given, but the, it was a shadow of good things to come where mm -hmm. Christ will now be our Sabbath and when we step into Christ, he is now our rest. But just before we entertain your questions, we want you to send in your questions on Facebook. And those in our studio audience, please write your questions. We'll be taking them in another minute. But can you imagine just excite, how exciting it is for the hand of God? I want to give you a visual. Can you imagine the hand of God and the voice of God simultaneously writing the law on a stable of stone? Um, and it says, thou shall not. How many of you have ever watched the Ten Commandments? I think we, should, we need to revisit it and look. Thou shall not steal. Mm -hmm. Honor thy mother and thy father. And, and it, it, it is very sad. I want you to look at the fact that when Moses was on the mountain and came down with so much excitement, with these tables of stone, ready to present it to these Hebrew people, 
They had built a golden calf and were worshiping. Can you imagine? God had spoken, but the people were busy building another God. And what did Moses do with this, this, this tablet? He threw it down. He threw it down and broke it, but what did God do? God gave him another set of tablets. God gave Moses another set of tablets. Isn't that exciting? Which is now in the um, Ark of the Covenant. Which, which God now puts the in the Ark of that. the Covenant <laughs> in <laughs> heaven. On earth, on earth. Right, on earth, on earth on sorry. Earth, yes, yeah, but there is a type. Everything that yeah. God, everything that is a shadow, we yeah, see that so there's a replica yes. in heaven. Right? We appreciate the Facebook audience. We appreciate you for sharing with us tonight. God has been so good. There's so much in the law that we could talk about. We, we try to not be too exhaustive because there's really a lot of, there are really a lot of details. But we appreciate you sharing with us and we, we want to ask you to share the, the, the page, share the, 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 the video, share the show with your friends and let them hear, like the, the, like the, um, the page and let your friends um, see what is happening um, on Word Vibes and on Passion and Purity as we celebrate God. We appreciate um, Bible Teachers Broadcasting Network. I'm telling you, we are so blessed for helping to broadcast this, this um, presentation. Bible on, study. Yes, this Bible study. Bless you all and see you all next week. God willing, have a blessed rest of the week. We are now going to be entertaining your question. All right, good evening. First question, why was the law so cruel? That's the first question that was asked. Why was the law so cruel? Why was the law so cruel? Um, I, I, I'm, I don't know exactly what's in the mind of the person that asked the question. You can ask the question again. The, the question is... Why was the law so cruel? Okay. I am presuming I was I had some young men in my office today at work and they were asking some of the similar questions. Somebody actually said that God is a is a is a murderer. And I said to them, No, God is not a murderer. He, you know, he, he kills some people, but he, he's not a murderer. Because when the Bible said, Thou shalt not kill as the Ten Commandments, what actually the proper understanding of that is thou shalt do no murder. Because the same God who said thou shalt not kill gave them capital punishment. Capital punishment was a part of the system of the law. There were some people who had done certain atrocious sins that God said these people should not live. They should be killed by the people, whether by stoning or by whichever means, by hanging or whatever. So, um, Can I just add to that? Yeah, it's I not that God was cruel, but he also was preserving the, the Jewish people or the Hebrew race to, for the proper time for the seed to come. So he had to preserve the, the bloodline of the people. So he had to be very, very strict with that. So there could be no intermarrying and no... So he had to, there are certain races, certain nationalities that he wanted, even the baby on the breast to be dead. That's how, and the donkeys and all the animals because he didn't want anything of those um, cultures to infiltrate what he had established in the Hebrew culture. And sometimes what we call God's cruelty, um, sometimes what we call God's cruelty, cruelty, cruelty right. is because we don't understand the severity. There's a scripture that speaks to the goodness and the severity of God. Right. God's, his ways are perfect and all, it, all his ways are just. Yes. Works are perfect. His works are perfect and Amen. all his ways are just. So Amen. even in what we consider the severity of God, there is divine justice. Right? So God is not cruel. The Bible talks about him as kind, long-suffering, the forbearance of God, the goodness of God. He's not cruel. Amen. Second question. Expound, expound on the law as a shadow. What does it mean? Oh, that, that would get us into the new and living way and grace, which we don't want to, but, but basically it is saying that it wasn't the real thing. If you imagine a real shadow, your own shadow, uh, um, compare your shadow to you. You know, it looks like you, it's shaped like you, 
but it's still not you. It's, it doesn't have, have your substance. And um, if somebody knows you really, really well, they may see your shadow and realize that it's, it's you who has cast that shadow. But um, that's in comparison to the new and living way and, the, and grace, that's how God compares the law compared to what we have now in Christ. It's just like your own shadow and the substance of who you are. So um, there's really no great, co there's no comparison if you want to look at it from a, real pragmatic um, standpoint. In other words, the, the reality has come. It's not the very image. It's just a... So some, can somebody give me a, another word for shadow? Reflection. Or a glimpse. A um, copy. It's, a, it's, a not, it's not... It, it, it is what a God silhouette. wants us to use, a silhouette. I like the word silhouette because... Yeah. We need to really realize that when I was growing up as a child, I was bowled over and Lord, I want to be like the old Moses. covenant people. I want to be like that. And it took the, the word of God to show me that in this dispensation, we have a better covenant with better, with better promises. promises. We are not, we are not, it's not about the shadows with us. We have the real image, the real deal is here. And, and Jesus said something in Matthew 11, I think that really brings this out, where he said, of men born of a woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. In other words, throughout all the dispensations leading up to John the Baptist, no matter Moses, Elijah who did not die, Enoch who did not die and went up into the heavens to some place that God prepared for him, um, none Abraham, Nobody that you read about in any of the dispensations leading up to John the Baptist was greater than John the Baptist. But Jesus himself said he was, a very, he was a bright, shining light. Now when God commends you like that, it's real. So, so he was actually the forerunner of Jesus. He walked into some places in the spirit before Jesus. So Jesus could follow his example. Of course, we know Jesus went past John the Baptist. But he said, of men born of a woman, John the Baptist the highest level of greatness. But he said the least in the kingdom in this new dispensation, in this new covenant, is greater than John the Baptist. That's, that's a landmark scripture that we should not forget. The least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. That, that's significant. Very significant. Because guess what? We are there and we want to be like Moses and we want to be like... But God said... We, in this dispensation, right, we're the least substance. in the kingdom, we're the substance. We are, and by the way, the, the, we won't get into it now, but God did provide a way for them to be, um, to be drafted in, and they are a part of the, the church in the wilderness that is now a part of the complete package. But God wants us to be satisfied with the fact that we are living in this dispensation, and our greatness is in Jesus Christ. Yes, and I have another question. It says, explain the law being a shadow of the Sabbath. Explain the law as being a shadow of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a shadow of the New Testament reality, which is what is spoken about in Hebrews chapter 4, which, is, which the, the Bible calls rest. Rest for us as new creatures, as Christians, is the reality of what the Sabbath was about. It was just one day out of seven days, but the reality in the new covenant is we are resting all the time, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. Not only are we visiting the Holy of Holies, but we are now living all the time in the presence of God himself. In the very being of God. So if we can accept that, if we can receive that, God has made us one with himself so that there is no struggle with Satan, with anything and, in this um, world. The, 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 we, we need to rest because the scriptures, the scriptures declare that there remained a rest mm -hmm. for the people of God. We are the people of God who have, who, who have now entered into the rest of Jesus Christ. 
where we cease from all our labors. When you come to Christ, you don't you you are not called to work, right? The work as in in in, in the case of you working out your own life. Your own life. Or coming up with something. Or coming up with you're called to rest in him. Hallelujah. And as you rest in him, you are a fulfillment of the Sabbath. Now, let me just say this. Um, a lot of the, the, the commandments that were given, all the commandments that were given, all the law that was given, the laws that were given, in Christ, mm. the sons of God can do by nature the things that are in the law. Mm. Come on, put your hand together and give God thanks. Yes, Lord. We're running ahead of where I said, but because of the seed of Christ, because of the Holy Ghost inside of us, we can do by nature. Name any commandment, and I can tell you that we can do it. Honor our mother and father. Trust me, we don't have to strive. There's once no you're, once you're in, in Christ, in rebellion is not tolerated. Right? We, yeah, and we, we don't, we're, not, we're not obeying our parents, but disobeying them in our hearts. Right. Amen. Our whole heart wants to be obedient. But there's something I want to mention, because you mentioned it, about John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. I just want to make a distinction here, because some people confuse that to think that John the Baptist, how could, Jesus, how could John the Baptist be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, but at the same time, the least in the church, or the least son of God, the least who is begotten of God, is greater than him. Because even though he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, he was not born again. He was not a new creature. So that's very, very significant because we saw, even in the Old Testament where the Bible says that the Spirit of God was in the mouth of some of the prophets. Pharaoh said that the Spirit of God was in Joseph, but they were not born again. They were not begotten. The gotten of God. They were not, their consciences were not made free right. from sin. So that's extremely significant that we make that distinction because the Spirit of God came upon Samson and he did supernatural things, but it does not mean that he was born of the Spirit. That's a totally different thing that never happened before the New Testament where persons could be born of God. And we, we take this, we take it, we, we belittle the New Testament. We belittle what we are because we have been so, we have been so um, Judaized, and I want to say it like this, we have been so lawized until we cannot appreciate what God has done in Christ for us. We cannot go back. When God does something in one covenant, we cannot then go back and take what he did and the way people operated and what was acceptable to him at that time and then put it on persons in another dispensation. That is unacceptable. And so if you lived under the dispensation of the law, God made provision for you. Because if you look in Hebrews 11, you will see those who obeyed God, they attained, right? We in this dispensation, died in faith, yes. they, by the way, they died in faith. And, and I just want to say that the law of God is perfect, converting the soul, right? But as, as we wrap up tonight, I want for you to see that God had a plan to change the dispensation because of the inward work that he wanted to do. He wanted a work of grace that would deal with what the law couldn't do. The law could not destroy the law of sin and death that was running up and down in our members. In our actual bodies. In our actual bodies. God sent a new law. The law of the spirit of life which is now working in us when we are born again. And when we really begin to come into an understanding of this, we, we, we see so many church dis, um, administrations that are built on the law. Even today, one young man said to me, no woman can say anything to him because the Bible says that a woman should be silent in the church. And that is so much against how the church started, where we see the Spirit of God being poured out upon Jesus' mother and all the women who were there. 
and um, it wasn't just men where they will receive the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says, what came the word of God to you men or husbands only? Yeah. So there's so much of our administration and the way we, we have built church that is governed by the old covenant. But God is going to take the, these chains off of his church. He's oh, going to yeah. take these chains off of our minds. And we are, we are, we are, God is raising up a whole new breed of deliverers in this time who will come into the full reality of what we are. And we will see the beauty of the substance of, of what we are now in Christ. So we want to thank you for watching. Um, this is the law part one. Next time you will, we will be going, looking at the law part two. We're just excited because when we get into the new and living way, we are going to be just so awed at some of the things that God has been doing. We want to thank you for watching. This is Passion of Purity Jamaica, our Facebook page. We want you to like the page and share the videos. And you can also contact us at Passion and Purity Jamaica. Dot, Passion and Purity Jamaica. JA.com. Ja. Passion and Purity JA.com. Also, if you look at our Passion and Purity Jamaica Facebook page, there is a button there. Donate. We are asking you, if you are blessed by this broadcast, to click on donation and send us a donation so that we can continue to share the message that God has given us in our churches and schools. We thank you so much. And in the media. <laughs> Amen. Right, for watching. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So God bless you all. God bless you in Jesus' name. See you next time. <laughs>